Hello! This video is quite exciting to film because it's my first proper video request since restarting on my channel. I got a message through on Instagram the other day that asked me to make a video about how anorexia and bulimia affects me both physically and mentally. I've decided to split this into two parts. So today I'm going to talk about how anorexia affects me both physically and mentally. And then early next week, I'll release another video that says the same about bulimia. So how bulimia affects me both physically and mentally. I decided to split it because I really wanted to have the chance to focus in on my own lived experiences of each. And I didn't want to end up uploading like a 20 minute video. But yeah, this video was quite strange to think about. And I decided to do the anorexia half of it first because I realised that I don't feel like I've personally suffered with anorexia for about five years now. And that feels kind of weird to say because my bulimia has had significant weight loss. My BMI does meet the stupid eating disorders criteria, but all my behaviours, all my thoughts are bulimia. So I had to be like, right, Nick, let's think back to the past. Let's really think how it affected you. And I don't know, like that felt so strange. No problem with it though. Like, I think it's nice to reflect on how far I've come. And even for me, it's been interesting to try and figure out how both have affected me quite differently. It does mean that a lot of what I say may be in the past tense. So like, this was me, this is how it affected me. You know, just talking about stories of the past. And as usual, I will be talking about my own lived experience. I find that with a video like this, I could very easily be like, right, these are the physical effects of anorexia and these are the mental effects of anorexia, but that's the same kind of list you could find from Google. Whereas I feel like when I talk through my own personal experience, you can see how it does affect someone so deeply. And I think if I speak about some of the ones that I know have affected me in a way that it's affected me, it can help people almost start to understand how behaviors like these things may affect them, even if it's not exactly the same. I'm going to start with physical side of things because everything I've just said in the introduction was physical and then mental. These haven't all affected me throughout my entire time of suffering with anorexia, which was on and off for about five years. I suppose for me, I largely suffered with anorexia from the ages of 13 to 18 and my body was like going through puberty at that point. The first one I'm going to talk about is feeling faint. This one actually only really affected me from the age of roughly 13 to 15. I was going through puberty at that point and I had low iron levels, so anemia, so the doctor kind of prescribed iron tablets. So I don't know whether that was caused by my eating disorder, like the faint feeling, or whether I just generally was anemic at that point. Another physical side of things was I was just exhausted all the time and I felt so weak, like little activities like just that, lifting up my arm, you know, picking up a box. I used to horse ride quite a lot. I just didn't feel like I had the energy. And that was the thing, like doing simple tasks was difficult. Even just like standing up in a classroom, walking from one class to the other, it's almost like my chest just felt heavy. And I found this the most when I first woke up in the morning. I know people say that it's difficult to get out of bed in the morning, but for me, the physical action of pushing my body out of bed, you know, first standing up, going to the toilet to brush my teeth, that was difficult. On the topic of bed, my sleep was quite affected. For me, it wasn't necessarily in the mornings. I really struggled to get to sleep. I would have heart palpitations. I sometimes would literally feel like I was dying and sometimes I was worried I was going to die because we all know a potential physical risk of anorexia is severe heart problems, heart attacks, I think cardiac arrest. I don't know if they're the same thing. And when I struggled with anorexia towards like the back end of my relapses, so when I was the lowest weight I was, my heart just felt like it was beating and beating and beating. And I think when I was going to bed, this almost panicked me more, which became a vicious cycle. I don't know if this next one is just me, but when I would come out of a period of restricting and I ate some food, my mouth would then like release a lot more saliva than I think it would normally. And this could sometimes be a bit painful. This sensation would only last like 10, 20 seconds, but I always found that really strange. And again, I don't know if that was just me. I then had two ends of the spectrum with this one. So when I was hungry, I would have the most excruciating hunger pains. It literally felt like I was being stabbed in the stomach. 
but then when I would eat after a period of not eating, I would often get really bad bloat, so my stomach would just feel solid. Like, imagine when you breathe in, you can flatten your stomach. I couldn't do that. And I would get really heavy pains in my stomach. So almost like a constant dull ache rather than the shooting pains of hunger pains. I then would have very dry skin. And the only way I can describe it was it felt thin. It's almost like there was no like hydration in my skin. And sometimes it did look a bit gray, you know, with like significant bags under my eyes. And on the topic of eyes, I would just look tired. I would just look sad. I just, I don't know. Like the only way I could describe it was I didn't feel able to smile. And I don't know if that was due to lack of energy or what, but a smile is just not something you would have seen on my face. This one, probably too much information, was being constipated. But for me, this was less over physical struggle. So I didn't have pains associated with being constipated. It was more of actually a mental thing where I was getting really frustrated that I wasn't passing whatever food I did eat out my other end because obviously I'm there panicking thinking it's going to make me gain some kilograms like oh goodness what's this food going to have done to my body. I know for a lot of people not having periods is something that happens physically when they've got anorexia. I don't know if this ever did affect me because I hit puberty quite late, I got my periods quite late and then I went on the pill quite young and then I had a contraceptive implant for six years so I won't really have known if I had a proper period cycle, especially when my anorexia came and went. Then this final one <laughs> is a bit weird. Like, I don't know if you would call these physical effects of anorexia, but I just had two really weird behaviours that I kind of had that I associate with me physically. So I would often find myself just walking around supermarkets, looking at food. And the way I think about that as being physical was I would literally be drawn to doing it. I just almost wanted to see what every single supermarket had. And then the other thing is just physically, I would constantly be shaking my leg. I didn't realise this was a thing of my eating disorder for ages, but it's something I know happens when I feel really full. It's not me like trying to burn calories or anything. It's just when I've got the discomfort or the guilt, my leg shakes. I'm quite glad I split this video into two parts because I'm only just getting onto the mental effects of anorexia now. The first one I'm going to go on to is all I think about is food. Like I will be doing, so when I was younger, I would have been doing school work. Even last week when I did have like day where I was struggling with thoughts of anorexia, for like four hours on my working day, all I could think about was, can I eat tonight? Can I avoid eating tonight? If I can eat tonight, what can I eat? And then this like mental battle just goes on for hours, it goes on for days until you eventually break that cycle, which goes on to my next point, the guilt. Like the moment I would then eat food, I would just feel insane amounts of guilt. I would have sat there thinking, why did you cave from that mental battle of can I or can't I eat food? And you know, only being able to think about food and do it. Like the moment I would take that first bite, my head would just think, you have messed up. And I think what happens in all of these thoughts is you've gone from having this mental battle of what can I and can't I eat, which has made you less productive, to then thinking you've binged, even if you've only had one mouthful of food, so then you can't do anything after because you're consumed with this feeling of guilt. And then you just end up having this whole brain fog because you should have been living like a normal life at this point, doing normal things, thinking about normal things, but you don't remember anything else. But those really intense emotions of guilt or those really intense thought processes of food. Something I often found came into this cycle, and I don't know if this affects many people, is I would occasionally dissociate. When I've mentally struggled with anorexia quite badly, I would start to think, am I even real? Is this my life I'm living? I would be walking through a street, walking through a supermarket, and my head would just suddenly go really like light, but not like faint or anything. This was literally a mental, like everything would just disappear from my brain. And I would almost feel like I'm floating. And I'd find this a really uncomfortable feeling because obviously if you're thinking, am I real? It's just not a good headspace to be in. I then have this weird mental struggle when I'm anorexic. And it's a bit of a contradiction, these two points I'm about to say. When it comes to adults and kind of motherly figures, I get really vulnerable when I'm anorexic. I almost try to like, I almost overthink relationships I would have with like a female older person in my life, almost like wanting that motherly care because I feel like I get quite dependent. It's almost like 
when I'm anorexic, I'm engaging in like some childhood thoughts and all I want is that attachment. I want someone to look out for me. But then it kind of contradicts with how I feel towards people my own age. Like when it comes to my friends, I kind of feel really independent. And I don't know if a part of that is wanting to almost isolate them, myself from them, avoid food situations, or whether it's just a case of like mentally, I want to trick people into thinking I'm okay so that I don't almost affect a social event I'm in and stuff. Another thing I really struggle with mentally when I'm anorexic is irritability. First thing is when all I'm doing is thinking about food, I don't like when people disrupt that thought process. I'm exhausted because I've not been eating food, so I just tend to snap about things more. Also, if I'm getting to a point where I am going to eat food, I get really snappy about anyone in like my kitchen space, anyone disrupting the build up to when I'm eating. Also, like just because you're hungry, I think everyone can relate. When you're hungry, you are just irritable. The thing I struggle with is I completely lose any sense of enjoyment. Again, this ties in with all I do is think about food. For example, when I was younger, I would horse ride quite a lot and I just have this memory of being 18. It was one of my last days I was having with my pony before we gave him back from the loan agreement we had. And I couldn't even enjoy being in his space. Like I should have been stood there, you know, cuddling him, savoring my last couple of days with him. And in my head was, have I gained weight? Am I eating food later? I am starving. I am weak. <laughs> the lack of enjoyment thing is kind of rubbish. And also like when you see your friends eating all these yummy foods at places and you know that you would absolutely love it and your head's just not with it. And my final like mental battle I have is my complete and utter lack of trust with things. First thing comes with like weighing scales and what I see in the mirror. Like I just, I kind of almost get delusional with what I think. The best way I can explain this is I genuinely, when I was younger, convinced myself that weighing scales were naturally programmed to go down in weight, to make people feel like they're losing weight. So I couldn't see it as myself losing weight. I just thought all scales in the entire world were programmed to do it. Which when I reflect on that, I'm a bit like, how, why? <laughs> and again, when you look in the mirror, you just, you don't believe that your clothes can't be fitting you anymore. So you like lose weight and your clothes get baggy. You think it's your clothes have stretched. For me as well, I would lose trust in what people were doing around me. So I'd often feel watched. I'd feel like people were judging me, especially when I ate food. Like I'd feel like people's intentions for being in my space weren't right. I also then would get in an absolute pickle with stuff like kitchens. So I get quite strict rules around like utensils and the cleanliness of a kitchen, which for me is a massive mental battle because this can then continue when I'm trying to recover. And I find that quite a difficult hurdle to overcome. And I think part of recovery is trusting those around you to help you in food situations and food environments. And this basically makes it so I can't. I struggle to trust anyone to, for example, cook for me. And then this for me just kind of gets worse then because this like mental struggle I get with cleanliness of kitchens, I then start to get it in other spaces. So for example, in cars, in on like a sofa, like if I touch anything I start to feel is, like think is dirty, I then just end up like picking at my skin. And I don't, like with that one, what I find hard is my mental like struggles with, you know, the kitchen cleanliness then goes on to other parts of my life. And I just start to get more and more rational thoughts around kind of dirt around me, what it can do. That might be one that's quite personal to me. And I don't know fully if that's like eating disorder related. I think it is completely to do my anorexia because it originated in a kitchen. And I think it was something to do with its control, but as you can see, it's kind of spiraled. But yeah, that's the end of me going over the physical and mental effects I've had because of anorexia. There may have been more that affected me that I've not mentioned. There may have been more that affected you or someone else that you care about. Equally, there may have been less or very different things. Everyone's struggle with anorexia is so different, it's so personal to them, but I hope as ever this has given quite a useful insight. Thanks again to the person that, you know, brought up this topic for the video. I will release the one about bulimia as soon as I can. I am actually going away this weekend. I don't know if I will be able to film it till early next week, but we shall see. If you do have any other like mental or physical effects of anorexia, please do comment them below because I'm always interested to see how it has affected other people. People may have ones that I end up realising have affected me, but hadn't quite, it hadn't quite clicked in my brain. And equally, people seeing your comments could help them. As ever, thank you very much and I hope you have a good day.